Ankle fracture, syndesmosis. Do we have a syndesmotic injury or not? So we're going to get the intraoperative stress exam, external rotation of the talus within the ankle mortis. This test determines if syndesmotic instability is present. You do that test after fixation of the other fractures. The abduction external rotation of the talus will try to displace the fibula from the incisura. The talus will move laterally and displaces the fibula. The ankle will show a valgus talar tilt or increase in the medial clear space. Before you do syndesmotic reduction and fixation, it is important to restore the length and the rotation of the fibula. When instability is present, then you will do syndesmotic fixation. How do you know if there is instability present? Always have a high index of suspicion. Syndesmotic fixation is more required when the fibular fracture is high and there is a deltoid injury. Be skeptical about some of the statements such as fixation is not typically required when the fibular fracture is within 4.5 cm from the joint because that's not true. Just remember Weber C is commonly associated with syndesmotic injury. So we're going to get the stress views and we're going to look at certain measurements to decide if the syndesmosis is injured or not. At one centimeter above the joint, we will measure the tibiofibular overlap, which will be decreased if there is syndesmotic injury. We're also going to measure the tibiofibular clear space. If there is syndesmotic injury, it will be more than 5 mm. And we're going to look at the medial clear space, which will be increased. Normally, it should be less than 4 mm. Some people believe that the instability of the ankle is more in the AP plane. The medial clear space can be increased preoperatively due to injury of the deltoid ligament. This is used to differentiate between spination external rotation stage 2 and stage 4. The medial clear space can be helpful intraoperatively after fixation of the fibula to diagnose syndesmotic injury on a stress view radiograph. So now we know there is instability of the syndesmosis and we're going to fix it. So what is the technique? I stated before you must restore the length and the rotation of the fibula. That's not good enough. An accurate reduction of the syndesmosis is required and direct inspection of syndesmotic reduction is helpful and that should be supported by the x-rays. Check for widening. Check for the Shinton line. Check for the dime sign, and that will be done after you reduce the syndesmosis and you use a reduction clamp.
This is the time to get an AP and lateral view and you assess before you put your screws. So I did the external rotation view and my interpretation is since Moses is out, now I'm going to reduce it. I'm going to use the reduction clamp. I'm going to recheck my measurements again. I want to make sure I'm not mal reduced. My foot is those flexed and the reduction clamp is between the fibula and the tibia. Now I'm going to fix the syndesmosis. Try to use multiple techniques to check on the syndesmosis injury. One of them is the external rotation view, the intraoperative one. The other one is the cotton test. Get a bone hook and pull on the fibula and see the movement. The third one is direct inspection of the syndesmosis. Make sure the cruller fascia may be intact and covering a major syndesmotic injury. I've seen that many times. Then after that, we're going to go to the technique. So you're going to dorsiflex the ankle. You're going to directly inspect and reduce the fibula. You're going to use reduction clamp. You're going to get the x-rays to prove the syndesmosis is reduced. Then you're going to put the screws about 2 to 4 centimeter above the joint with an angle of 20 to 30 degree posteriorly to anteriorly. Do not use laggy screws and do not over compress the syndesmosis with the talus in plantar flexion, although a lot of people think it is not possible. These screws are really controversial and no consensus about them. Whatever you're going to use, 3.5 or 4.5 millimeter screws, small or large. Whatever you will use, 3 cortices or 4 cortices. Are you going to use 1 or 2 screws? Are you going to use metallic screws or bioabsorbable screws? No consensus. But there are a few important points about it. Number one, the 4.5 screws are not used a lot nowadays. When the widening is bad, you're going to use more screws and more cortices. The more, the better. When you put the screws proximally and you don't aim anteriorly, you may miss the tibia. And make sure when you go from cortex 1 to 2 and 3 in the tibia, you don't miss cortex number 3 in the tibia. Try to elevate the ankle a little bit so your hand will be allowed to do some anterior direction of the screws. So the screws will be angled a little bit. Occasionally, I cross the screws. So will be one direct straightforward and the other one will be oblique. How about a screw removal? It's controversial, but you are not going to remove the screws before three months. So what are the problems with the syndesmosis? Number one is reading the x-rays. I use the five millimeter for reading the x-rays. Whatever it is in the medial clear space, or tibiofibular clear space, as my mark, 5 mm is abnormal. I want to make sure the fibula is anatomically reduced and that the fibula is reduced to the incisura before inserting the syndesmotic screws. I want to make sure I get an x-ray and check the talus both in an AP and lateral planes. So the two important problems with the syndesmosis are you're missing the injury and if you discover it and you fix it, you may reduce it. Some people think the mal reduction is as high as 50%, which seems a little high. So try to use direct inspection and interoperative radiograph 
before you fix the cinder's Moses. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful. This video is for educational purposes only. Please consult your doctor before you make any decision about your medical care.